Hey, Richard Mellor here, you know, with Facts Working People blog. And I just want to make a couple of comments, again, about class and identity politics. Um, I, I remember seeing just recently, you know, they, uh, when they removed, the Republicans removed Ilhan Omar from the Allied Services Committee. And um, I saw the uh, uh, AOC's bizarre performance in the Congress uh, 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 where she had a real opportunity to take a class position and go after them. And um, instead, of course, she said that this is a result of a, the war against women of color. Well, uh, Ilhan Omar was not removed because she's a woman of color. She was removed because of her politics. And to deny her that fact, that it's her politics, is a disservice to her. And also what it does is just complete obscures the, the, the real issue. Were some of the people, or all of the people, racists or, uh, or misogynists that removed her? Maybe so. But the question is, that's not why she re was removed. She's the most left Democrat, really. She's, the most, she's a courageous person. She's, uh, the, the, her position on foreign policy uh, is a, a thorn in their side. And they wanted her out of there. And there was an opportunity to get her out of there. And for AOC and the rest of the squad to all be going on in that, the way they did, it, that, that just shows you there how pathetic they are really politically and the left wing in the Democratic Party in general. And the other thing is, uh, uh, um, if you look at society from the question of classes, uh, um, I, there was another one of the squad, I can't remember which, which one it was, but she talks about, oh, and Ilhan Omar was also there talking about it, about um, a woman's month. This month is woman's month. We're going to run out of nationalities and colors and, and, and genders and everything else with the months. There's only 12 months. I have to split it up into every fortnight or something. But she was saying about the need for the, the, the importance of a women's month. And then one of the other squad says, well, yeah, when I go into the halls of Congress, what do I see? Men. It's just men. You know, all, the, all the, the busts and the statues and so forth are of men. Now, that's absolutely true. But when you ignore the class question, it's about a minority of men. Even if you were to say it's white men, it's still about a minority of men. The vast majority of men, if we're going to talk about it on sexual or gender terms, the vast majority of men are not going to end up there. It's just like, it's just a complete, that's what happens when you ignore the class question. And if you look at society, as uh, the dominant aspect of society being the class question, that there is a ruling class that owns the means of producing the necessities of life. They own, the, uh, to use old terms, you know, the tech business, well, well, I won't use the old term, um, the tech industry, the energy industry, the manufacturing, that there are a, f a minority of people globally that own the means of uh, producing our food, Cargill and so forth, our water, you know, look at the aquifers in California, and our agriculture. There's a, if you look at the top of the, the, the pyramid, there's this group of people based on the fact that they own the means by which we produce the necessities of life distribute them and determine what's produced and so forth. If we look at the world that way, and that within that and that below them is an intermediary layer of what we call middle class, uh, who um, may be small shopkeepers in its classical sense, shopkeepers, small business, uh, um, but also that middle class would be, uh, it does get complicated in the US because it's associated only with money as opposed to social role, but like professionals, scientists, uh, professors, and all those elements who may in some ways be a worker in that they sell their labor power, the mental labor power, but their ideology, their culture and everything about them is they see themselves as this intermediary layer and generally everyone in that intermediary layer wants to increase and advance its role in the pecking order. This is true of the black petty bourgeois, the black middle class and, and any middle class. The, the white middle class is uh, obviously a dominant and more powerful because it's connections to the white ruling class and so forth. But if we have to look at them as classes, as people who have a certain role in production predominantly. Now, it's not black and white. You can get small shopkeepers, for example, that don't hire anybody. 
or this or they may hire one person or they they they've had a small business or they slip a, they, the business collapses look at the pandemic business collapses and they end up getting a job so they they there it's not absolutely con completely black and white but but that's what it is and when you obscure it when you hide it it doesn't explain the world in the way it is for that woman to say when i go into the halls of congress where well, it's just everywhere there's men well there are but there are a certain type of men and, and, and they're, a, they've, they're from a certain, they have occupied a certain role in society and the development of this society. The vast majority of, of, of when, if you would say, for example, you say, oh, the wh white man owns this or the white man owns that, they used to say the Jew or whatever. Yeah, the, the, most of the capitalists, the big capitalists, and most of the bourgeois, the ruling class in this country are white. That's absolutely correct. But the vast majority of white people own nothing. Or very little. So that's what happens when you obscure the class question. And the reason that the middle classes, the Ilan, Ilhan Omar's, the AOC, the, uh, the, the, uh, the middle class layers of any different grouping, the reason it avoids the class question is because ultimately it wants to increase its class position and its class strengths in relation to its competitors. It wants to get further up the ladder. I used to think it was Malcolm X, uh, X that said, I'm not quite sure, but it doesn't really matter, that the object is not to rise up out of your class, but to rise up with your class. And of course, that's danger. That's the danger. And the whole thing about identity politics, it, it obscures this reality. And so when you talk about the, the Congress being full of white men, you know, it, it, there's, it, it's the same old story. I, I wrote, wrote, wrote some time ago a piece where this actress, Anne Hathaway, or, or whatever she, her name is, I thought it was uh, Shakespeare's wife was Anne Hathaway. She's an actor. And there was a, a murder of a, a black woman here on the uh, um, subway uh, platform. And she wrote something about, uh, uh, you know, white people have to do this, white people have to do that, we have to do this. This woman was sailing around the Mediterranean with a billionaire boyfriend on his yacht. So by saying just white people, which white people is she talking about? I know no white people like that. Most white people have n know nothing about her life. And yet she's lumping us all together. And there's a reason for that. And, and, and there's a reason for that. And it's, there's nothing wrong with, with recognizing what special oppression is like. Muslims in India, Catholics in Northern Ireland. Native Americans here, black people, disabled people. There's nothing wrong with that. But substituting, uh, 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 focusing on that as uh, a means of being able to end the oppression, not of them, but society in general, or workers in society, is, a, is an abject failure. And, and, and we must always point out the, the, the class is the, the main issue and, and start from that point. Just a few things I wanted to say this Sunday before Mass.